Hello, kingdom blessings to you. It is Tuesday night in the word with Elder Phadrian. We are presenting Faith Church International tonight. This is our first Bible study. We're going to give a moment for others to come in. We're going to tag a few friends. Once you come in, I will just ask that you will tag like tag and share with others once you come in please like tag and share with others it's raining here in Birmingham tonight but we are just grateful that God has graced us to be able to be covered um, not only physically but spiritually that we can minister this word on tonight okay like tagging and sharing inviting others God bless you to those who are coming in. If you would speak, say hello so I know who's on the line with us on tonight. Amen. God bless you, Lamina. Thank you for joining tonight. Um, again, I'm presenting Faith Church International. This is our first Bible study, and it will be named Tuesday Night in the Word with Elder Phadrian. Um, Please like, tag, share with others. Um, the mandate that God gave me concerning this ministry was to teach the word with understanding, to also um, teach the who, what, why of the Christian faith. And the reason this is because many times, if we communicate with other faith um, sectors, they can explain why they believe and what they believe. But many times as Christians, we just speak about the emotional part or we may speak about what we do in the congregation. But we don't naturally um, have the, the go to to speak about who God is. And I think that is very important. I must say that as I teach this word, I'm also a student of this same word. Um, I'm learning along with you all. I'm not a scholar by any means, but I'm just a willing vessel to be used by him. God bless you. Thank you, Caricia, for being present. Again, I'm just a willing vessel. I don't claim myself to be a, a scholar. However, I am a student of his word, and I'm encouraging all of us to be students of his word. Our topic tonight would be, I am God. Because if, if we're truthful, if we're in conversation, so many people nowadays are saying like Jesus isn't God, like he's some other entity. He's some other that he's not divine, that he's not um, divine deity. But we're going to prove tonight through scripture that he is God. Let us um, bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence, Lord, we thank you for this time of teaching. Lord, I pray that you will open the ears of the hearers, Father God. And I also pray that you would touch the mouth of the teacher tonight. May Thadrian decrease and may you increase by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just thank you that you are doing an awesome work in our lives, Father God. And I thank you, Father, for sending forth those who will be hearers, those who will be vision implementers. We're careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due unto your holy and righteous name. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that I seal this prayer. Amen. God bless you, uh, Minister Marilyn. Our focus tonight is I am God. That's our subject. And I just want to say this. Christ is at the center of every scripture that is in the Holy Word. He is in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. If you have your Bibles, please join with me for a moment because we will be going into this word. We're going to take time to study the word on tonight. Again, Christ is at the center. He is the heart of of the scriptures he is the pattern he is the promise he is the present throughout the bible from genesis to revelation yes he is um in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth we know that god created and he spoke these words but when we go down into genesis 1 a little bit further in um verse 26 he said let us make man in our image well, we know that us and our is plural. That means it's exemplifying more than one. Well, here we can see an example of the Godhead. Um, someone may say, what is the Godhead? Some people refer to him as the, the Godhead as the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When we think about God the Father, he's creator. 
When we think about God, the son, he is savior. And when we speak of God, the Holy Spirit, we think of him as being a comforter and a keeper. Yes, we have God with us at all times. But in John 1 and 1, some may say, well, um, you telling me that he was in the um, Genesis. Well, what about the, the Old Testament and the New Testament? Is he the same God? Yes, he is. He was there in the beginning. There's a song that said that God was there in the beginning. And I want to um, take a note of Isaiah 96. And I don't want to rush because I'm feeling like I'm rushing myself. Isaiah 96. We see Christ in this scripture. If you take a moment, find Isaiah 96. It says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now that is Old Testament scripture. That's Isaiah 9 and 6. Let us go back to Genesis. Genesis 3, 16, we see him as being the seed of a woman. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, that is speaking about God bruising the head of Satan, and Satan bruising the heel of um, Jesus Christ. Also, we see that God not only is the seed of the woman, but he is also the light God is light let me give you that scripture John 1 and 1 1 through 3 reads in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things that were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now before we get into him being the light, we see here that he is the word. He is the word. And we want to make sure that we study the word. Because it's not, how can you really know God and you don't know his word? And here we are finding out that Jesus, he is the word. And he was existent in Genesis. He was there at the very beginning. So verse 9 says, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, Jesus is the light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. I want to take a moment for us to look back at Genesis, the first chapter. In verse number three, it reads, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Verse four reads, And God saw that the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Now, I want to um, focus on that for a moment. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And I just spoke of in um, John 1 and 9 that that was the light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, if we go down a little further, we see about how God created the light um, of day. And the night being that of darkness. But if we go down further into the scripture. It's verse 16 where it says. And God made two great lights. And the greater light to rule by the day. And the lesser light to rule by night. And he made the stars also. Now in verse 3. We may have thought that the light that he was speaking of. Was that of the sun and of the moon and of the stars. But I would like for us to take a moment to be believe this as this being God um, representing holiness and righteousness. And God said, let there be light. Let there be righteousness. Therefore, Jesus Christ is light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Darkness is unrighteousness. It's sin. Even in the beginning, God was dividing righteousness from unrighteousness. In John 12, 46, 
it says that I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Let me read that again. Jesus had a purpose when he came into the earth. John, St. John 12, 46, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Now, I want to encourage us on tonight to not remain in darkness. Second Corinthians 4 and 6 says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our, in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's through the face of Jesus Christ that we have the knowledge that we can see the revealed glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I want you to know tonight that not only is he the word, not only is he the light, but he is the true God. First John 5 20 says, and we know that the son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. Now, when I opened up, I read Isaiah 96. Remember, we are studying the word. Let us go back and look again at Isaiah 96. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now in John, 1 John 5, 20, we just saw that he is the true God, that he is the son of God, that he is Jesus Christ, and he is eternal life. Not only is he eternal life, but he is the everlasting father. Yes, I'm so glad tonight that God has given us an opportunity to look into his word in a greater depth. We went over Genesis 126, where it says that let us make man in our image. Well, who was God talking to? He was talking to himself in his entirety. Um, I was taught that there's three expressions to that one God. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I would like to express it this way. I am Phadrian. I am the daughter of Maudine. I am the sister of Cynthia. And I am the mother of Courtney, Micah, and Alexia. But I'm the same person. However, I have different roles in my oneself. But God is so awesome that many people want to reject the Trinity because they said that the word Trinity is not used in Scripture. However, he is a triune God, but he is one at the same time. John 1 and 1 again, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We got to remember that God was there in the beginning. Jesus was there in the beginning. The Holy Spirit was there in the beginning. Well, how is this and why is this? Because they are one and they cannot be departed, divided among each other. They cannot be separated. So why am I coming together tonight? Um, why are we coming together tonight? Because God gave us a mandate in Matthew 28, 19. And it told us to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There we see the triuneness of God. That when we go out, that when we teach his word, that when we baptize them, we are to do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Next, we have Deuteronomy 6 and 4. See, I'm showing you the parallels of the Old Testament and the New Testament representing God all at the same time. We have Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is is one lord he is one lord now when you look in the um in the hebrew or in the greek or the strong um, reference the lord our god stands for elohim elohim 
and one Lord, when you see in the Bible, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that is Jehovah, or some would say Jehovah, or Yeshua, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the same in substance. They're equal in power and equal in glory. Let me say that again. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the same in substance, equal in power, equal in glory. And I must state this again. Although we confess him as um, Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, even though we pray to the Father, even though we ask the Holy Spirit to com comfort us and keep us, they are all there at the same time awaiting us to um, ask for help, to pray, to ask for direction, to ask for strength, for he is one Lord. St. John 14, 10 says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. You remember I just said that the Father... The Son and the Holy Spirit is same in substance, equal in power and glory. That is represented here in Deuteronomy 14.10. And I'll read that again. I hope you're um, taking notes because as a student, we take notes and we go back to study the word for ourselves. We have to go back and study the words for ourselves because that's when it becomes a part of us. St. John 14.10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? They cannot be separated. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Well, I would like to say that as a daughter of God, that tonight I am doing his work. And I'm not speaking of Adrian. I'm speaking of him. I'm speaking of his holy and righteous word. And I can tell you before I entered into this time of teaching, I had to pray and I said, Lord, you gave me this mandate. So I pray that you would give me the words to say. And I want to share this with you tonight. That as we reflect on the word of God, we ask him to teach us his word that we may hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against him. That's scripture. For Isaiah 60, 19 says that the sun shall be no more your light by day. Nor for brightness shall the moon give you light, but the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Now, there will be a day that there will not be a sun that shine and there will not be a moon that shine. But we can um, dwell in the light of the most high God throughout all eternity because he is that everlasting light. Now, when we were speaking about this scripture about that he's the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world, that's 1 John 1 and 9. Yes, his light dwells within you. His light dwells within us, those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now, before we came unto Christ, we was in division with him. We were separated from him. And that's why we need to learn his word. So that when we encounter other people, we can share our faith with understanding with them. So we won't just say, come to my church because we have a good choir. Come to my church because your baby can praise dance. Um, come to our church because you can sing and we need a soloist. No, we need to invite people because of the Lord our God. And we need to be able to be able to communicate who he is to others. Just as if you talk to a Muslim, they can communicate their faith. If you speak to a Jehovah Witness, they can clearly communicate what their faith is. So the mission of faith international faith church international is to teach the word of god in a manner that we can explain the word of god to others with understanding that they'll be drawn to christ because we have to remember that god has called us to be ambassadors when he saved us he didn't save us to just go into our churches and stay there. He called us to go beyond the walls of the church and to be able to share his word, to be able to share the gospel with others. And I'm so excited 
that he has given us a mission to go into the world. Yes, he did. First, um, St. John 1 and 10 gives us a little bit further into who God is, who Jesus Christ is. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. You remember Genesis 1 and 1? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, Jesus was there. He didn't just come on the scene when um, Mary birthed him from her womb. He was already on the scene from the beginning. Again, 1 John 1.10 says, I mean, St. John 1.10 says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Even those who he was called to, even those he was called to, those were, that was his chosen people, did not receive him because he did not come in the priestly, in the kingly garments that they thought that he would. Because he came um, in a low estate, that he was born and placed in a manger, what is a feeding trough for animals. Yes, he was. He came in a low estate, but yet he was king of king, lord of lord. And I'm so excited that he chose us. To be his representatives in the earth. Let us look at St. John 3.19. It says, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light. Because their works were evil. Let that not be us. Let us not like the ways of the world. More than we like righteousness. Let us not be those that are found outside of him. Those people that love darkness rather than the light. I want us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart because he first loved us. For um, John 3, 16, many of us learned it as a child. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life i'm here to encourage us to know that we can have everlasting life because god he died on the cross for our sins he became sin for us yes we're human beings and we're we're subject to sin but we can ask god to forgive us and we can ask god to create in us a clean heart and renewing us his holy and righteous spirit i want you to know that god loved us so much that he came down off his kingly throne and he put on flesh just for you and I. St. John 1.14 And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Once again, we see that Jesus Christ, he put on flesh but he is God and he dwelt among us and he is all gloriful. He is mighty and he's full of grace and he's full of truth. God um, was in the Old Testament and many of us know that as the law, but he gave us a new covenant and that is the covenant of grace. God gave us grace because he knew that we were unable to keep the law. Because he knew that even when his children wanted to have a, a, a um, judge and a king like other nations, he said, why do you long for a king and a judge when you have me? But because they wanted to see what it was like to have a king, they experienced hardship unnecessary. And I'm saying to us on tonight, we are experiencing hardship unnecessary when we don't choose the Lord as our personal savior. Yes. We're going to have trials and tribulations, but it's one thing to go through and have God. And it's a whole nother to go through and have no hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. Yes, we have the true and the living God dwelling now within us. Those who have received him, we can receive him as Lord by confessing him. We can receive him as Lord by believing in our hearts, but we have to make an outward confession as far as with our mouth and with our walk. Do you love him? And can we tell by the way you live? If we have to repent, that's okay. Lord, forgive us because we, we don't always make it the right decisions. We don't always choose the right thing, Father. But Lord, I thank you that you're so gracious. 
Now, someone asked the Apostle Paul that, is it because of grace that we can still sin? And he said, God forbid. No, we're, I'm not saying that we have the license to sin. I'm saying that if you do and when you fail, you can ask God to forgive you. You can ask him to cleanse you. You can ask him to strengthen you, to build you up so you will not fall in that same area again. That's what we call true repentance. When we ask God to forgive us and we ask him to give us the strength to not repeat it again. We have a loving God. And I think so many times we have presented him just as a harsh judge. Now there's going to be a day that come that if we found outside of him that you will know him as judge. But right now he's still presenting himself to us as Lord as Savior, as Father, as the righteous, loving God that he is. Yes, he's still showing himself as one that is ready to receive you into his loving kingdom. The question tonight is, are you ready to receive him? If you have not received him as your personal Lord and Savior, just list it below and we can pray for you. That you receive the Lord. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you can't be saved. You will be saved by your confession of faith. And then there's the next step. There's baptism. And we thank God for baptism. And we thank God that we are connected with him through baptism because Jesus Christ himself was taken under the water, fully emerged, and came up. And God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son. And it's just a great thing that when I remember the day when I was baptized, you know, some people say that you can go down in, into the water, a devil and come back up a wet devil. But I'm thankful that God is a God that he understands seasons. He understands times. He know how to plant seeds. He know how to water them. And he knows how to give the increase. Yes, someone may have encouraged you to come into the household of faith to come in. Someone else may have encouraged you to say, hey, why don't you come to Bible study? Why don't you come to Sunday school so you can learn about the Lord? Somebody may have told you to come on in to new members class so you can learn about what the word of God is and what the mandate of this ministry is. Yes, but it's God who gives the increase. And when I was 12 years old, when I was baptized, I didn't know that this day would come, that I'll be one that would minister his holy and righteous word. And if I'm truthful, y'all, I thought that I could run away from it. And I thought that he would change his mind. And I think the devil even wanted me to sabotage myself in hopes that God would not still choose me. Yet he did. He still chose me in spite of me. And as this past week, um, as after I gave the first introduction of Faith Church, because I supposed to did three introductions to it before this time of teaching. But let me tell you, the enemy came in. Yes, he did. He started making me have heart palpitations. I started have tighten, ch tightening of my chest. I started having hot flashes every 10 to 20 minutes. I was having confusion. But you know what? I said, God, you gave me this mandate. And I'm going to do it in spite of, regardless of what the enemy throw my way. And let me tell you something else that the enemy tried to throw my way. I, um, because I was sick, I was unable to take my baby to school. So I took her to, um, be tested for COVID. So if they asked why she was absent, we would have a reasonable deceit, um, excuse of why she was absent other than I was having hot flashes. And I come to find out that my baby was, um, positive for COVID but had no symptoms. But that's the kind of God that we serve. That even when we don't understand that we have been in the midst of danger, that he can let us know what's going on so we, that we would know how to prepare ourselves and that we would know how to pray. So I'm asking you all who um, have supported me on tonight, please keep us in prayer because we're going to do this, what the Lord says do. Faith Church International is no longer a vision. It is a manifestation. And if you're in um, need of a church home, or if you're in want of being a worker in a new ministry to build a ministry, come on in. We need your help because I'm just one person. I, I can't do it alone. 
I need those who God has called to help. If you are already skilled in ministry, that is great. We um, are preparing a training um, that we will have personal training for those who will be a part of the ministry because the main focus of this ministry is to know the who, what, and why of the Christian faith that we may, may be disciple, um, go out and disciple other people. And what does that look like? Jesus walked with the 12 for three years. He taught them who he was in his word. And let us find someone who we can disciple, that we can walk with, that we not only invite them to worship service or Bible study, but that we talk to them throughout the week, that we um, have small group. We can have small group where we um, get together and study the word together and rightly divide the word of truth. I'm just excited because God has revealed tonight that he is God. Jesus Christ is God. He is the I am that I am that Moses spoke of. He is the one that parted the Red Sea. He is the one that gave the blind man sight. He is the one that the woman with the issue of blood, she touched him and she was healed because he is God. I want us to um, continue to um, go over the scriptures that we had tonight. Um, if you have any questions, um, please um if you have any questions, you can put them below. Um, next week, I am hopeful that I will have um, Zoom up where um, you can come in and answer your questions live on video for others to um, see. However, if you do have a question or a comment tonight, you can at the bottom of your screen. There's um, two images of bodies like a head and body. If you click on that. You can in, um, ask for a request to come in, and I can invite you in if you have any questions. Do we have any questions? So tonight, we not only knew him as Lord, as Savior, but he is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the light. He is the true God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the seed of a wonder, woman. He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He is God. This will conclude our time of teaching tonight. I'm so excited. Lamina, thank you. Thank you so much for being a part. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. Thank you so much. I thank you. Um, and we will um, connect after um, this time of teaching. I speak blessings upon each and every one of you. May the Lord be with each and every one of us. May his word resound in our heart and may we grow the more in him. I would like to invite you to be a part next week. On Tuesday, we will have Bible study every Tuesday night, Tuesday night in the word. And we will have time where we will have other speakers, other like a panel of speakers where we will um, um, share the word and discuss the word as a panel. So we're excited about what the Lord is doing. Y'all excuse my other phone. It keep alarming, but I can't get up and get off the live to cut it off. But God is doing a great work and we're going to have a fellowship on October the 23rd is Saturday, October the 23rd from two o'clock to five o'clock. We're going to have a praise, worship and exhortation service here in Birmingham. And we are asking that you will come and be a part. We are asking for people to wear um, masks and we're asking you to bring your um, lawn chairs. And if you have tents, you're welcome to bring tents as well. And we're going to have an awesome time in the word because not only we're going to praise God through song and through dance, we're going to have someone to minister the word to. And it's, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. And I'm just thankful that I was counted faithful to be able to do this. And I pray that you all are encouraged and I pray that the word bless you. May you all have a blessed night in the Lord. God loves you and so do I. Good night.